1938 by Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein and Jeff re-established the fibrous dysplasia in the year of 1942. It is a benign developmental non-heritable disorder. It occurs due to the mutation of GNAS1 gene which is located on chromosome 20. Basically, it is a form of uh, disorder uh, basically in, in our bone where there are a uh, presence of ovan bone. The ovan bone transfers into a lamellar bone so that the bone will be rigid and uh, it won't allow for uh, um, uh, fractures. In this case, the ovan bones fails to mature into a lamellar bone and this produces too much of fibrous and connective tissues which in which the patients are more prone for fractures and uh, more prone for deformities if it occurs in the skull or in bone if it uh, fibrous dysplasia occurs in the skull it changes the shape of the face and if it occurs in the bone it uh, deforms the bone and cause pathological fracture which in turn alters the which in turn even alters the gait of the patient such as tendon bugs and bandering gates of the patient. Fibrous dysplasia is most commonly in uh, seen in monostotic form and the other forms of fibrous dysplasia are polystotic, craniofacial and cherubism. Monostotic fibrous dysplasia The incidence of monostotic fibrous dysplasia is common in male and female. It occurs in the age group of from 10 to 50 years. Most commonly, the fibrous dysplasia occur in the ribs and then the proximal femur and then the tibia and least commonly it affects the area of humerus and both bone forearm, radius and ulna bones. And this is the diagrammatic presentation of polystotic fibrous dysplasia which occurs between the age group of 2 to 30 years. Females are most commonly affected than males and the common site involved are maxilla, ribs, humerus, proximal femur, shaft of femur, tibia and then the fibula, metatarsal, metacarpals and radius and ulna bone. This is a very dangerous form which is associated with other conditions such as Masebrad syndrome, uh, McEwen Albright syndrome and aneurysmal bone cyst and the transformation of malignancy is high, seen higher in polystotic fibrous dysplasia than in monostotic fibrous dysplasia. When polystotic fibrous dysplasia is associated with Masebrad syndrome, the transformation rate is very high compared to other forms. Masebrad syndrome is a form of intramural myxoma tumors. This is a gross appearance of fibrous dysplasia which was resected from the rib which looks like a grey greyish pattern with uh, uh, surrounded by a cortical bone. On coming to the histology, the biopsy is the definitive diagnosis for fibrous dysplasia. On biopsy on histological examination, there will be Chinese alphabet patterns with specules of oven bone which is indicated in the arrows over the left side of the diagrams. As I said earlier, the associated conditions are vacuum albert syndrome, aneurysmal bone sits, Masebrad syndrome. Most commonly, McEwen albert syndrome is always associated with monostotic form. If patient is followed up when a asymptomatic asymptomatic uh, the X-ray findings are always incidental. When a asymptomatic patient is diagnosed with the case uh, with fibrous dysplasia, subsequent X-ray to be taken until it is confirmed it, uh, it is not uh, malignantly transferred. Any change like sudden increase in the size of uh, the existing fibrous lesion is due to the malignant transformation is reported in 0.5% of cases. Malignant transformation can lead to osteosarcoma of fibrous dysplasia. Clinical presentation 
the patient will be presenting with Tenenberg's gait and Wandering gait. Some patients are asymptomatic. Some patients will be presenting with pain, limping, shortening and visible deformities like coxa vera or coxa valga deformity with diffuse swelling over the affected area, skin pigmentation like a few red spot which is characteristically seen in McCune Albert syndrome and pathological fractures. This is the clinical presentation of graphic spot which is seen most commonly over the trunk and the lower uh, lower part the cafe spot is also always associated with mcquin albert syndrome the characteristic hyper hyperpigmented lesion with jagged borders the jagged borders is also called as coast of mine appearance which resembles the coast of mine radiological finding medullary lesions over the metaphysis or diaphysis will be seen in sclerotic margins with punched out lesion and vertebral collapse are seen. The classical radiological finding which is seen in fibrous dysplasia is ground glass appearance. This is a classical example of ground glass appearance in the proximal femur with coxa verga deformity uh, like shepherd crook deformity how it uh, patient uh, uh, x-ray will be seen. Bone lesions are detected on radiography performed to evaluate common injuries such as sprain, thinning of cortex without periosteal reaction with matrix appearance like ground glass appearance is the classical X-ray finding in fibrous dysplasia patients. Biopsy is indicated as a for histological confirmation. Subsequent X-rays to be taken until the lesion is biologically inactive and mechanically insignificant. Management. On coming upon to the management, there is no clear guidelines established for orthopedic uh, management of fibrous dysplasia. The management depends upon the age, type and the site and the extent of the lesion. Asymptomatic patient to be followed up with consecutive x-ray until the patient is clinically and biologically diag- mechanically and diagnosed that the patient there is no transformation. Medical management Vacuum, uh, Fibrous dysplasia is always associated with uh, endocrine disorders so that endocrine causes like thyroid abnormalities, diabetes and other, uh, other abnormalities should be ruled out and the appropriate management of the disease should be done. There are bisphosphonates used in fibrous dysplasia most commonly second and third generation of bisphosphonate, alendronate, pamidronate, pam, pamidronate and zolintronic acid are used. Intravenous supplementation of pamidronic and zolintronic acid can be administered. Indications of surgery, fear of malignant transformation, pathological fractures, severe pain on weight bearing, virus angulation below 120 degrees. Surgical management. This is the basic outline and the following slides comes below either curettage and bone grafting or only inter- internal fixation use or a single stage procedure like osteotomy with uh, um, intermedullary nail fixation or double level osteotomy with uh, as a single stage procedure and double stage double stage procedures these are the surgical management options first Curatage and bone grafting. Asymptomatic patients, most commonly seen in monostatic fibrous dysplasia, can be treated with curatage and bone grafting with, with or without internal fixators, depending upon the bone quality to be treated. This is a case of a um, 12 years old child uh, who had to wait bear over his right. Uh, Left upper limb, patient developed pain on um, using his uh, using his upper limb. So intramedullary uh, tense nail fixation was done for the chronic upper pain, and the patient who needed to weight bear, weight bear like weight lift or weight bear over his use his arm. Internal fixation with curettage and bone grafting. 
certain condition like polystotic fibrous dysplasia is associated with anurosal bone cyst this is a classical case of polystotic fibrous dysplasia in a 16 year old child with associated with mccune albrecht syndrome with fibrous dysplasia the radiograph showing a light lesion in di- diagram a in picture b which reveals fluid filled level with lesion consent of anurosal bone cyst anurosal bone cyst will be always near to the dysplastic area so uh, it should be ruled out for which curettage and bone grafting was done after which intramedullary tense nail fixation was done this was shows the post op x ray this is a x ray of a 27 year old female with monostotic fibrous dysplasia who came to casualty with uh, patho- who, came, uh, who arrived with a pathological fracture of her uh, right humerus for which bone grafting fibular bone grafting with um, plate fixation was done and picture figures picture c shows the post operative three months of limb of fracture healed with no recurrence of fracture scoliosis scoliosis is commonly seen in fibrous dysplasia surgical fusion with instrumentation to be done fixation to be adequate and adjacent vertebra to be stabilized osteotomy internal fixation with or without bone grafting osteotomy are done most commonly in severely deformed bone it is most commonly done in polystotic fibrous dysplasia and uh, after osteotomy the internal fixation either can be a plate and screw fixation or a angle blade plate or an uh, uh, intramedullary nail intramedullary nail has more advantage than other following which angle blade plate has more advantage than angle Um, plate and screw plates or a dhs it can be done as a single stage procedure or a double stage procedure on coming up to single stage procedures this is a x a and b figure uh, image shows the um, dysplasia of the proximal tibia where uh, osteotomy was done and intramedullary tense nail fixation was done in an uh, child and b shows the image of uh, corrective osteotomy with the intramedullary nail fixation in uh, adolescents double level osteotomy as a single stage procedure can be done after the measurement of anatomical axis mechanical axis neck shaft angle of the bilateral lower limbs Uh, in in this x-ray this is a post op x-ray figure 4 shows the there are two level of osteotomy site from gt to 5 cm below there is one osteotomy site and uh, at the shaft of femur there is another one osteotomy site and uh, after all two level osteotomy intermedullary nail was inserted and it was fixed which which shows 120 degree 125 degree of neck shaft angle two stage procedures two stage procedures are simple but first initially osteotomy done and it is fixed with a screw plate or a blade plate after which after 6 months of the healed osteotomy another level of osteotomy is done and then it is placed with uh, fixed with intramedullary fixation most commonly done in the patient with shepherd crook deformity and commonly present in polystotic fibrous form first stage corrective co- correction of coxa vera with osteotomy and fixation with blade plate used as the variable angle screw plate or a angle blade plate can be used this is 31 year old uh, female with uh, fibrous dysplasia and uh, showing uh, severe uh, shepherd crook uh, deformity of 159 15 degree of neck shaft angle this is the pre operative uh, planning for uh, closed wedge osteotomy with a template paper and, uh, and the measuring the angle 
intraoperatively the patient was uh, non uh, dynamic screw fixation in uh, it was the plate used was a uh, plate and screw was used uh, dhs angle uh, variable angle screw plate since in variable angle screw plate um, the complications are uh, higher than compared to a variable angle uh, blade plate because screw blackout and uh, plate blackout are uh, most commonly seen children below the 6 year of age can be apply, can be put on hip spike cast and uh, above adolescent above adolescents non weight bearing strict non weight bearing should be advised and uh, for child it should be hip spike to be applied with the knee in uh, Uh, he with the abduction at forty degree. Maximum stability of the angle blade plate fits deep into the lower part of the femoral neck. Two stage procedure. Second stage procedure. It it's done after intertrochanter costotomy is healed. It is done after six months. Intramedullary nail fixation with proximal femoral nail is done. This uh, image A shows the deformity. Image B, uh, sorry, figure D shows the deformity. Figure E shows the osteotomy correction with uh, angle blade plate. Figure E so F shows the second second stage procedure where uh, again osteotomy is done and next shaft angle is maintained and fixed with proximal femoral nail. Surgical complication: uh, massive blood bleeding. Uh, uh, the level of fibrous dysplasia can occur due to the aneurysmal bone cyst, and implant failure, screw blackout can occur, and other surgical complication like infection uh, and uh, malunion, nonunion can occur. This is uh, a classical uh, screw plate plate in the upper femur. Uh, demonstrate the first stage reconstruction patient with uh, um, angle pl- plate screw plate. The due to the weak cortex, uh, weak cortex, the screws were uh, backed out and the implant uh, uh, is back. Uh, plate is has been pulled away from the bone. Blood loss is uh, precautions to be care taken before uh, surgery. Blood since blood loss is higher, hemoglobin uh, level should be estimated and arrangement of bleeds to be made. Patient should also uh, patient and patient and nurse should also be explained about the multiple episode of reconstruction surgeries. through the growing years advantage of using internal fixation immediate adequate weight bearing and better prognosis than a blade fixation thank you